Hey everyone, since that last video I've had a lot of uh, positive comments and feedback and messages on the video we did regarding pheromones and estrus urine. I have people asking some really good questions and I thought let's do a video and explain this just a little bit deeper. So years ago I would test doe urine in front of our bucks. We've tested it many, many times. Store brand urine in front of our bucks failed the sniff test. It failed. But when they had a chance to smell fresh doe urine right out of a doe, whether she was in heat or not, it didn't matter. They did a flaming curl. They wanted to shove the urine from this first nasal passage up the fingers here. The pheromones would somehow have an interaction here. Maybe a nerve impulse would go up into the brain and get locked right up in the brain. And they could check for pheromones living and they'd know the doe's heat cycle. They can't do that until they do a flaming curl. I talked about that on our last video. Guys are still asking questions. So tonight I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in depth and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Bucks want fresh doe urine. They want to find a doe because it is breeding season. That's what they want. Fresh doe urine works, period. Not in heat. So do I ever bring my does into heat? Can a doe be brought into heat? Yes, the doe can be brought into heat. We use an easy breed sheep cedar. It's a progesterone implant. We put the progesterone implant into the doe and we leave it in for about two weeks. The doe absorbs the progesterone and she thinks she's pregnant. Elevated levels of progesterone, they stay high for about two weeks and we've tricked the doe into believing that she is now in fact pregnant. And, and uh, Two weeks later, roughly, we pull the easy breed sheep cedar out of the doe. Her progesterone levels plummet, and she thinks that she's miscarried or lost her fawns. At least that's the way it was explained to me. So her body will automatically, at the sense of losing her fawns, ovulate 55 hours later. We inseminate the doe on the 55th hour. We have semen froze in liquid nitrogen roughly 300 degrees below zero that I've bought off some of the best bucks in the country. So when we're about to inseminate the does and we do what's called a vaginal insemination, today we don't do it that way. Today we use laparoscopic AI. That's a whole nother video. But back in the day when I was trying to figure out doe urine, we did vaginal AI and I have a speculum. And this speculum has a little light that I can turn on. And I, and I feed that inside of here and we actually physically put this inside the dough and I can see the dough's cervix when we're going to AI. Okay, this light is fed inside there and I can see your cervix. But prior to seeing her cervix, there's a little bit of mucus in there and the dough is in heat. It's the 55th hour. So she's in heat. So we have a forceps with a gauze pad and we put it inside the speculum, the forceps, and we reach in their needle nose and we can actually gauze off her cervix and we can pull out uh, a light mucus. And now, once the mucus is out, I set the forceps aside, and I go in with an AI gun, and I can go inside here, load the semen up out of 300 degrees below zero from the, from the nit nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, and I can go inside and deposit the semen up against the cervix. If things go well, we have a newborn fawn out of AI 195 days later. So why am I telling you all of this? Because it's pretty complicated. A lot of stuff going on here. But I have a forceps with a gauze pad that has a mucus on it right off of her cervix. If there ever was pheromones available that you could put out to attract a buck, it's on the gauze pad. No doubt about it. Do I save the gauze pad and do I take it myself out hunting? There's pheromones there. And I've taken that gauze pad and I've walked over to a tame buck and I've walked up and I've held it out to him and he'll do a flaming curl and that buck knows that doe's ready to be bred, that she'll cooperate. Why is it that I don't keep these gauze pads and I don't use them right off of these does? Why don't I take them out in the woods and use them myself? Here's why. They don't evaporate. They don't get into the wind. They don't create a wind, a scent tunnel going through the wind. It's not a long range call. It, it doesn't evaporate that way. So what do we want to do? We want to take fresh doe urine. It's not in heat, you guys. There's no such thing, in my opinion, as pheromones 
estrous urine in heat urine in a bottle. It comes out of the dough that way. And there's living pheromones. It's a living process. But there's no such thing as in heat estrous pheromones in a bottle. It dies and turns bad. I don't think we can keep it alive. I've never tried to keep it alive because I've had such good luck with frozen dough urine. When the does are peeing all over the back of their legs, they're going to find a buck. And if you, were, if you were to ask your friend, do you think you'll find a buck this fall? Ask yourself the same question. Do you think you'll find a buck? You might. But I guarantee you one thing. That doe has better odds of finding a buck than you do. Because she's advertising with doe urine all over her back legs. So I want to emulate what the doe's doing. And I want to spray doe urine all over my hunting area. Make it stink pretty like a doe. And again, real quick. I don't think you're tired of this. Air goes in, air comes out right here, long range scent receptor. He does not utilize this until he does a flaming curl. He can't do a flaming curl from 500 yards away. This is what leads him through the woods for a month looking for does. This is what we want to trick. He says any doe will do if she'll stand still and cooperate. I'm going to go check it out. We spray doe urine around, we fool this part. But people, the industry has got us all thinking about estrus and pheromones and all this other stuff that go up into the brain here. It doesn't exist in a bottle. That's my honest to God opinion, you guys. Pheromones, estrus, in heat urine doesn't exist in a bottle. We don't need to fool this upper portion. We just need to fool the lower portion. How do we do that? What was the doe doing? She's putting pee all over her legs. And she's going to find a buck. Odds are. Her method works. So why did we ever want to use one drop on a leaf? Because the industry taught us that. The industry taught us to use one or two drops on a cotton swab somewhere. Use lots of urine, trick that first part of their nose, and see what happens. That's my best advice from almost 30 years of raising whitetails. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Thank you very much.